Hey, this is Ralph from Flex Film. I'm really having fun doing these uh, car videos. I'm in my Element 2000 Lexus, back roads of Alabama. I'm in my deepest thoughts. This video is gonna be about carbon window film. Uh, a lot of people are confused about carbon window film, don't know what it is, where it comes from. Is it really better than dyed film? We're gonna answer some of these questions in the next part of this video. Okay, what, what we're gonna do here is just kind of, let's just lay it out here, okay? Carbon is carbon technology, and if it's real carbon, it comes from a typically an Asian source. And uh, dyed films are very domestic, and if you get a good dyed film, they typically come from the USA. There is one place in the USA that dyes polyester, and they're very good at what they do, but there's another place that dyes polyesters overseas and they are really good at what they do but there's only two places in the world that can deep dye polyester in the most proven uh, color stable method available. Uh, other places that that deal with dyed film uh, sometimes struggle if the if the technology is not deep dyed. I'm not saying everybody but anybody that's in the Asian side of the, of the world that's trying to offer the USA market dyed films they're usually typically considered economy. I'm not trying to split hairs or be specific here. I'm just trying to make a quick video and kind of enlighten people about what you know we're getting to carbon here. But uh, carbon is certainly uh, a co competitor product to dyed film. Uh, it has advantages and disadvantages, but you kind of have to know what you're comparing to dyed film if you're dealing with carbon. And I'll quickly say this: there's 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 films in our industry that have the carbon name that have no carbon in them whatsoever. They're just dyed films. There is another source that I'm familiar with that calls their product carbon and just has a little bit of carbon in it. It's usually in their hard coat and it causes a hard coat to be real scratchy. And uh, the 95% the, the of the remainder of the technology is just deep dyed technology. So it's like that company is playing on the carbon name for marketing purposes, but they're building their film basically with dye pretty ingenious it, it actually works but it, you know it is what it is I'm just I'm not trying to sound like it's derogatory I'm just calling it out and then you've got pure carbon films that involve just carbon and they use different types of carbon to uh, make the color the carbons are usually put in the laminate adhesive they're little particles of carbon of nano size nano is a billionth a, a, bi a billionth of a, a nano uh, of a meter a billionth of a meter and uh, basically you can measure the width of a molecule with a nanometer. So we're talking about really small particles that are incorporated into the construction of the window film. Now, a lot of those technologies are coming from Asia because Asians typically can't dye film very well, and, but they can, the ones that I'm usually dealing with or looking, looking into are able to use carbon and they're really good at carbon. In the United States, are, they're not really great at carbon. They don't. The, the, that technology didn't really originate in the United States. So the, what, the, what the USA market has is the dyed polyesters. And those have, over the last 40 years, have really, really been perfected. And uh, so if you, if you get the best of the best of a dyed film, and you get the best of the best of a carbon film, you really, in a way, kind of can have two equal products. Because, you know, with, with all the good, you can always expect the bad you may have a beautiful, clear, stable, color stable film if it's deep dyed, but you, you might not have the performance that you would like to have with it. So I guess that's the downside of dyed film is performance. But you know, we're talking about clear, beautiful, you can, you know, color wise, you can just about make a lot, you can make a lot of things happen with dye. But with carbon, you can get a beautiful color, you can get color stability, uh, you can get some literally almost no fade technology but uh, you, and you get performance because the particles of carbon absorb more solar energy than dye and these are marketing you know uh, advantages that you may have with carbon uh, but the films do come from asia sometimes you're dealing with different polyesters or adhesives and uh, those could be considered uh, not as not as good as some of the american technologies uh, by most uh, but that doesn't mean they're all bad they just um, struggle in that department um, uh, performance is definitely something that you know you have an advantage with the carbon and in and, and marketing uh, had to do a turn there uh, the marketing is something that's uh, I think 
carbon, carbon sounds great. You know, it's, you do a lot of stuff with carbon. You can make yourself sound different with carbon. But let me tell you a bad little secret about carbon. Carbon has low angle haze. Uh, there's different degrees with different technologies and it's based on the particle sizes uh, or inconsistent particle sizes. It's like a dirty front windshield uh, when you put some of these films on because the sun hits them and they glow like a dirty windshield because the particles on a dirty windshield you know, will reflect sunlight indiscriminately and have like a, a cloudy look. And that's what carbon does inside the film. If it's, a, if it's not a, a up to par technology, then they look really cloudy and they're not as desirable as dyed films, especially with the way they look. But that's improving. Um, a lot of carbon films though, uh, uh, still need assistance uh, on the darker shades. So we're talking about pigments and, and dyes added to them because uh, just the regular carbon that they used years ago in some of the other companies' technologies that aren't as advanced, carbon on nanoscale is kind of an ugly brown color. And so they have to add something to it, usually like a, a pigment or, or, a, or a dye uh, to, to level that out and mask that color and darken the film. Because uh, too much of something good sometimes can be bad. You know, you bring in more low angle haze, you bring in a, un, an un, undesirable color. So a lot of these carbon films have additives and sometimes the additives can fade. But if you get the more, more up to date, newer carbon technologies, some, sometimes you can really, uh, you, you know, get a no additive, completely 100% carbon technology because they use, they use different uh, carbons now instead of having to rely on other additives. They're, they're using like uh, coal and, and even diamond, <laughs> they're using, Graphite, you know, there's lots of different carbons I didn't know about. And they can put each one of them on nanoscale and kind of mix them around and manipulate the color not to be this ugly brown color anymore and eliminate the, the use of pigments and create some really interesting products. So if you're dealing with the best of the best of carbon, typically you're dealing with an Asian product uh, and you deal with the best of the best of the deep dye technology, you really have kind of an equal choice. You, you see what's happening? There's the USA market has their best and, and the Asian market has their best and now you've just got more competition in the USA market, carbon and dye. That's what's happening. And this is what this video is about, just to sort of lay it down. And um, I, I just wanted everybody to know that. Okay, I had to take a quick pause. I had to go in a store, gather my thoughts, but uh, let's conclude this video. Um, so I'm in the same boat you guys are in, you know, especially if we want to buy a carbon film. I want to buy a carbon film and I want it to show up in a flex film box and, uh, you know, I want to sell it and I, and I don't want it to come back. I want people to like it and buy more. You want to put it on a car, you know, you want people to like it too and you don't, you want them to come back and bring their friends and family. Um, so here's some things we got to know about carbon so far. Now understand, I'm going to post this video, you're watching it now. And you know all this can change in a matter of weeks or months, and you know just just remember, and if you're seeing the video, look at the date, and then you'll know kind of how to put all this in perspective. But um, you, you got to know what you're buying, and there's a lot of places that sell carbon. I could say e-carbon film. Uh, other other places can say e-carbon film. Just remember something: uh, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Now, you, you, if you got a, a, a domestic window film business uh, that's a manufacturer or distributor offering carbon um, here's the questions you have to ask yourself where was that where was that film made just remember it's an Asian technology chances are it's not and wasn't made in in the United States um, most of this carbon technology is originating from Asia so if you've got a domestic window film company that says they're manufacturers and now they're offering a carbon film, you might want to ask some questions. Um, I'm not saying this is necessarily derogatory. I'm just opening your eyes a little bit, like my eyes had to be open. Because if, if you got a, uh, a typical manufacturer that's doing dyed film and variations of dyed film, then all of a sudden they, you know, they want to get in the game here to be more competitive and they offer a carbon film okay what is it because we know you probably didn't make it um you know if you're making dyed film how are you making carbon film all of a sudden you, you just you just don't acquire the technology in-house when you just have a lamination machine uh here's what the secret is a lot of these manufacturers with their name on the box that are offering carbon film are private labeling it they're getting it from another source 
It doesn't even have the same glue as their dyed films. You can you can sort of tell it's not their product, but, but, but you know they don't lie and say it's their product. They just don't offer to tell you that it's not their product. So the assumption is that it is their product. Just a FYI on that. Uh, other distributors that are that are offering carbon are probably or could be doing the same thing. I am. I'm, I'm actually you know getting it from another source and put it in my box and, and I'm selling it as, as what it is. At least if you call me, I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you where it came from. I'll tell you how it was made. I'll wear you out, you know, giving you all the details because uh, I want you to know what you're buying from me, anything I sell. There's nothing that I sell that's off limits to questions. Um, but back to the topic, uh, th th there is other places you can buy carbon film that has the name carbon and it may have absolutely nothing to do with the actual technology. It may just be a name and it may be a dyed film. And, you know, the question is, is that's cool. If it's called carbon, that's fine. But, it, you know, is it carbon? Does it have carbon in it? Where was it made? Um, you know, is it just a name? If it's a dyed film, that's great. Where, where does the dyed film come from that I'm going to sell and, and call carbon or, or tell people that it is carbon, whatever. These are just questions you have to ask. You know, is it a dyed film with a name? Is it an actual carbon film that was made from the source that you bought it from? Is it private labeled carbon? And if it's private labeled carbon, you know, the, the, the reason I'm bringing it up in, in a derogatory way is, you know, what is it? Where was it made? Is this the carbon that has a lot of additives with it? Is, it, is, this, a, is this a product that's got a lot of inconsistencies and it's going to give me a lot of low angle haze issues? Uh, you know, what kind of glue am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a, a foreign uh, adhesive technology? Am I dealing with a more domestic adhesive technology? Um, this is where it gets tricky. You just got to know what's up, you know. Uh, once you zero in on w what the good carbons are and what's the bad carbons or which carbons have names and which ones are just dyed, you know, it just makes it easier on you when you want to sell something to somebody when you know what it is. That's all there is to it. Bottom line here, it, it, this gets confusing. There's a lot of secrecy out there. There's a lot of people that won't discuss or talk about their sources. Um, you can always call me and tell me what you're buying, where you're buying it from, and chances are I probably know uh, a lot about it. And if you want me to, I'll discuss it with you. I'll tell you everything I know about it. And if I don't know anything about it, I'll tell you I don't, I don't know anything about it. If you send me a sample of it and I don't know anything about it, by the time I get the sample, I'll probably can tell you all about it. I have ways of figuring out uh, carbon technology. It's very, very easy to trace carbon technology back to the source because it's a small world out there. So anyway, this is my video. That's the conclusion. I hope this has cleared up some things about carbon film and, you know, understand carbon film can be an alternative to dyed film. I don't necessarily see it as being superior to dyed film. It does have advantages. It has a disadvantages. And there's a lot of great dyed films out there that I would put on my mother's car and there's a lot of great carbon films out there that I would put on my mother's car. Consequently, there's dyed films and carbon films out there that I wouldn't put on my mother's car. So anyway, thanks for watching my video. Hope this has helped you guys. Uh, can't wait to do my next car video. I'm really liking these. Thank you.